Sunday fun day. That's that's gone again. That's not happening today, is it? I mean, I thought we were going to. I thought surely a season opener in Washington. What could possibly go wrong? The answer, uh, it's, it's everything. Everything's gone wrong. And I'm... Eagles fans, this is not going to... What is that? Even that's fucking me off now. What is that? What is that, bu what is that budget music playing? Get it off. Get it off now. Where's it... What is that? <laughs> Eagles fans, this video is going to be a roller coaster. If you're new to the channel and you do enjoy it, it would be amazing if you could hit that subscribe button. Before we get into dissecting whatever the hell happened down in Washington today, I do just want to say a massive thank you for your support and also announce again that we have started a brand new podcast. PSN Radio is live right now and you will get daily podcasts from me and all the boys over at PSN. So from every team covering everything you could possibly think of, we want to bring you the freshest content from the freshest voices and hopefully you guys will be a part of it so if you want to subscribe to that leave a five star rating on your preferred platform that would be brilliant but this was not the game eagles fans woke up hoping that well i mean it was for about a quarter and then it it just wasn't eagles got out to a 10 nothing lead in fact they got out to a 17 nothing lead jalen rager caught a 55 yard bomb carson went had confidence the offensive line handling business and then then things got weird the running game wasn't working as it usually does. Obviously, no Miles Sanders there. And the offensive line was made up of a set of bagels, which obviously proved problematic when going up against a line of basic first-round picks. Guys like Deron Payne, guys like Chase Young, and obviously Montez Sweat. So what we saw was Washington eventually come back and then come back and then come back and then win by quite some margin. In fact, the Eagles choked a 17-0 lead and lost 27-17. And the main reason for it, I'm honestly putting it on the head coach. And you can look at Carson Wentz and you can look at the offensive line all you want. But the basic fact of the matter is this. The Eagles came into this game with a very, very clear must-apply game plan. Okay, You're playing against a very rapid front four. A front four which are going to decimate a wounded, a battered, a bruised offensive line. An offensive line that is going to soak up a lot of pressure. Meaning that are you really going to drop Carson Wentz back five steps, seven steps, play action? Well, no, because he's going to get absolutely butchered. And you can't run the ball because that's not going to happen. And you know that Ronald Darby and their cornerbacks aren't exactly prolific in terms of tackling. So what you need is a lot of screens, a lot of sweeps, misdirection, slants, anything underneath to get playmakers in open space, which which is why those first couple quarters, Dallas got it run wild. He had 100 yards to his name. Averaged 12 yards a catch. And most of them came when the ball was already in his hands. Instead, what we saw was the Eagles give up some leverage and then give up some leverage, start to panic. And Carson Wentz did this classic Carson Wentz thing, which he's been known to do at times, and take unnecessary risks and just fire and fire and fire and fire. Normally, that's either going to end one of two ways. Either A, it gets him out of trouble, or B, it gets him in slightly more trouble. What we saw today was it got him in a lot of trouble because for whatever reason, that man was not firing on all cylinders. He was missing left, right, up, down. And you can say he played great in the first quarter. I mean... I beg to differ. He had 50% completion percentage, I believe, after Q1. And there were times where Zach Ertz was grasping things off the floor. Dallas Goddard was grasping parties off the turf. And then we saw some drops. Ertz had a drop. Hightower had a couple. But we won't slander him because he's exempt from all criticism forever. But seriously, it was just a total disconnect. And I don't know whether you want to put it on COVID or the fact that Carson Wentz might still be banged up from training camp. I don't know. We know he had a bit of a setback. But at the end of the day, if Wentz hadn't been practicing and he'd just been kind of mentoring and that sort of thing maybe that extra rust came into play but the touch on that ball that has defined Carson Wentz's play up to this point was not there was not there at all 24 of 42 272 yards for six yards per pass is not great and then you take into the fact again he gets sacked eight times which is a career high that's not great you then take 14 quarterback hits that's not great. There were times where he was trying to do too much with it, and it hurt the team. It really did hurt the team, but it's been one of the first games in a long time I think Carson Wentz has been detrimental to the team. It's easy to say, yes, he built up a 17-point lead. He very much took it away as well. 
Now, obviously, now obviously the offensive line is next on the hit list because they played shambolic, but what did we really expect? I mean, at one point, you had Jordan Mailata making his NFL debut against the likes of Chase Young. That is not a vibe. How would you expect that to end? You had Jason Peters and Jason Kelsey missing assignments. And if you've got two players that are making errors, who are the veterans on the team who've been around this team since day, and the young guys are expected to hold their own, I don't know what more you can ask for. But then, if it couldn't get any worse, it could. Boston Scott heads inside. Vinnie Curry heads inside. Brandon Graham may have a concussion. Jack Driscoll taken out of the game. Injuries start mounting against this team. So not only are the offensive wheels falling off, the injury bug is back and sinking its teeth in again and deeper and deeper. And I don't know what Eagles fans are expected to do at this point. I'm not even angry at the injuries. I'm more angry at the lack of communication. We found out that Miles Silence wasn't going to play in week one on Friday, okay? Miles Silence has been day-to-day -day for about a month. Now, that's 31 days by my estimation, and that is way too many days to be day-to-day. -day. Now, I don't, I don't think it's the training staff. They change training staff and medical staffs every year at this rate because of how much stick they come under and how many problems they have with injuries. It's the communication from top to bottom. Hopefully, we don't get landed with that in future, but this was not a good showing for the Eagles. It was piss poor from top to bottom, and the only area of the team which is, in my opinion, exempt from criticism is pretty much the entire defense and that seems weird to say i was very skeptical about darius slate i can't lie and you guys know this i was a big byron jones guy i've got no problem in holding my hands up and standing behind it i was worried after watching the 2019 tape again of darius slate on terry mclaurin he held terry mclaurin to 61 yards kept him out of the end zone something the eagles failed to do on, well, they failed to keep him under 100 yards on both of their last two games. So that's already a big improvement. Avante Maddox played his ass off. He was all over the field. I was very impressed with him. Nikel Roby Coleman had a couple of big plays. I was absolutely besotted with what we saw from Rodney McLeod. I thought he had the one of the best games that I've seen in a long time. In a relatively new role as well. He was still playing inside a fair amount. But the guy ended up with eight tackles, a pass defense. He was on fire. And one of the main people keeping the Eagles within chance of not choking this league away. Just buying them something, anything at that point. And then he talk about linebackers. Nate Gary led the team in tackles, someone that has come under a lot of criticism under the last couple of years. He looked far more disciplined today, far more secure in the open field. Duke Riley, six tackles for him. Someone that had been a perennial special teamer, presumably kept on the roster for that reason, had a massive impact on defense today. And when you go further forward, T.Y. McGill, elevated from the practice squad, goes in, makes an absolute brilliant account of himself. Makes an absolutely brilliant account of himself, bringing down his first career sack with the help of Vinnie Curry. Malik Jackson, what we saw from him in that first quarter was unbelievable. He sort of tallied off after that, but that first quarter of Malik Jackson was borderline only fans content. The defense, and I can't believe I'm saying this, was not the problem. And I really want to dive into the defensive tape. Like Marcus Epps even on special teams had a whale of a game outside of one penalty. But the rest of them, he was absolutely brilliant. Jake Elliott kicked the length of the field on a kickoff. Cam Johnston had a good day at the office. The only area of the team that let the side down was the team that put up the 17 point lead to begin with and the Eagles couldn't get out of their own way and the game plan didn't change. And I don't get why Doug Peterson is running play action after play action after seven step drop and Carson Wentz is slinging it and misfiring and slinging it and misfiring. I just don't get it. I really don't understand. If you know going into that game, that is a risky four man rotation. That may be the most prolific pass rusher of the last few draft classes going head to head with unstable tackles. Surely five and seven step drops, surely play action and long developing plays aren't worth it. Surely you would take what's underneath. Surely you would leverage the West Coast offense like you did to get to that 17 point lead to begin with. I don't understand what Peterson was doing. I think he has to be massively accountable for this, for not putting his players in a position to make plays. And the perfect example of that, even though the play came off, third and two, third and two, Carson Wentz has been bully battered, bruised, muddied all game long, and he dives on a third and two, then stays on the ground because he had about 87 bodies land on him. That's not smart football. You can get a third and two without sacrificing wet. Fourth and inches, fourth and one, fair enough. Third and two, 
That is way too unnecessary in my opinion. It's just a stupid call. And that was very much the theme of the day. Just a lot of stupid, throw the same mud at the wall and hope some of it sticks eventually. And there's a lot of work to do. There is a lot of work to do before this team head out to week two. Because in week two, they've got Aaron Donald, mate. They've got Aaron Donald. Way, how much fun is this gonna be? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not looking forward to it, boys. Look, I just wanted to give you my thoughts after the game, give you my highs, lows, winners, losers, and all the rest of it. If you did enjoy it, again, make sure you stick around, hit that subscribe button. It will be amazing to see you over at PSN Radio if you want some podcast content from us. From myself, Liam Jenkins, this week in Philadelphia sports will drop tomorrow. I'll see you then. This will, I'm going to need a rest and a bottle of wine.